so there's just a very quick um just a very quick review that i wanted to throw in it's only about tires uh but anybody who comes out in the gold fields would know that um geez if you ain't got the right tires you're going to be using some plugs and i remember my first trip up here overall in the last three three and a half years i suppose i've prospected maybe 14 uh, 15 months of, of that time this year being the first year i went full time starting back in the golf fields in february uh to see if i can't make a bit of a living out of it but the first trip up i um you know i'm not knocking the tires because let's say tires fit for a purpose is what we're what we're really talking about here so i came up with a set of um i had i was on my second or third set of um second set i think of Toyo um, AT3s, I think they were, or AT2s maybe. Here, uh, it's neither here or there, but they're a great tyre. You know, um, they were great for getting our bush. Um, you know, over in over in Queensland and down in the New South Wales, or you know, down Cape to Dan fishing and such. They're really good. Um, you know, semi off road tyre on-road off-road and I suppose back in that stage I was probably only doing about 30 percent of my driving was off-road um, back in the days before I started prospecting but um, I ran I think I was ran two sets of those and the second set I came across the gold fields with about 10,000 k's on them I fitted them just before I left to come across my first trip to the gold fields and I think by the time I'd finished my first couple of months I'd deployed something like 16 or 18 plugs across three tires um, one one tire slashed pretty badly on the sidewall on a bit of shale I think I had I think I had five plugs in it and it held um, and became a second spare it's just as well that trip I actually was running two spares one on the roof and one on the back of the car so after that one of me one of my friends I was prospecting with ran into um, and I'll try and keep this short, but ran into one of the mining vehicles and he looked down and said, Oh, I see you got Toyos on. And the fellow said, Yeah, we we're really, really going hard on these Toyos at the moment. He said we we're pretty hard on tires, but they'd fitted the um the Toyo M55F tires, which have you know a, a better a better ply design, I suppose, for this sort of ground and much, much better sidewalls. And they were saying they hadn't staked one, you know, in the time they'd been using them um, or cut one with shale. So I went to the uh, M55s and uh, they were a good tyre. I think I I think I think staked maybe one or two on the sidewall. And really the sidewall is where you don't want the stake. You know, having a plug in the, the actual tyre ain't so bad. But you don't want to be running tyres with, you know, one or two plugs in the sidewalls. It's, it's not kosher. And uh, I think I... Um, Now the AT3s or AT2s, um, the only drawback on those for normal use and uh, for normal use and getting off-road is is wear. I, I, I struggle to get 35,000 k's out of those tyres. Um, I mean I'm running a pretty heavy rig, I'm running you know just over three tonne and uh, mostly on the back you know they'd wear but and I, I put some of that down to to be honest I put some of that down to the um, lack of you know track alignment that the cruisers have now you know because we all know that the 70 series uh you know somewhere around 75 mil i think it is each side less than track correction and when you follow behind him you can see it's quite obvious and um whether it's true or not but with the alignment um you know my gut feel or or my belief really is that um that attributes to tire wear on the rear end and they do tend to try and fire, follow the front ends and they can be can be a bit nasty on roads that's become quite corrugated um, or you know channeled from where it's been muddy and you know someone's been through and, and cut channels and it has dried out the um, it's not beyond the rear end of the 70 series to, to whip pretty hard at times when a when the front wheels are following the track and the rear wheels are trying to work out which you know which rut to run in so um, I tend to attribute some of the wear, you know, on the back to that. Now, I was nearly going to go with the Toyos again, 
but it just so happened they couldn't supply them at the time when I was leaving New South Wales um, to come back over and um, when I spoke to him you know the the fella said oh, why are you so keen I said well they've got a good sidewall on them you know up in this sort of country I mean you need it geez you know if you wanted to find country was hard on tires with the you know with these these trees mulga bushes and everything else sticking out of the ground I mean I'll see if I can find an example but let's see well look it's not a great example but you know you you end up with you know these all over the place and now this one's a bit rotten but you'll end up with these that are still you know that are dead but haven't been weathered too much and you'll get these sticking up you know out of the ground and the stakes on them that they form and some will have two or three but those stakes on them that they form i've got to tell you they're relentless they're like um like rio they're hard hard as bloody steel and uh they'll tear a tire apart if you're not careful so i told him my requirements and i think i swore i'd never go good year um you know to my naivety but um he suggested a set of these the uh, goodyear wrangler mud trains now i never thought i'd run mud trains um because once again my thinking was a little bit off you know i'm thinking mud train i hate mud and i don't really go anywhere where it's too muddy and if i see a, if i see a bit of nasty mud i'll just avoid it you know gets into bearings and gets into everything and rusts and god knows what else you know some some mud can have higher you know higher salt content um than the ocean but um you know i spoke to him about it and and he said well you know then that's not the case you know they're they're a, mostly an off-road tire so i chose to fit them now i've got to tell you let's have a quick look but um what have we got on there i, I suppose and you can see look these tires work pretty hard you know they work pretty hard out bush and i'll go pretty hard and I don't avoid a lot of, to be honest, I, you know, like I, sh I should be one of these blokes that should be staking a tire every day because I really don't have much mechanical empathy, I suppose, for for the ground I drive over, and or tire empathy maybe. But these, I think I've got about thirty-five thousand k's on these. Um, you know, you can see, look, you can see how hard they work, you know, but. I think I've got 35,000 Ks on those and there'd be another good I'd be thinking I've got at least another 10,000 on them maybe another 15 so that means I'm probably looking at um, you know 50, 55, 60,000 Ks which is the most Ks I've ever had out of tire on this vehicle and um, they're a little bit noisy on the road once they wear a bit but you don't hear it because the 70 series is that bloody noisy anyway and um they drive well on the road they drive as well as any other tire i've had on and these tires will just take you anywhere i mean they're a really good tire i drove across a terrible track trying to get to a spot absolutely atrocious shale spikes of timber sticking up everywhere you couldn't find a, you couldn't find a run where you weren't driving over some bit of wood so you, you choose to drive over the wood and avoid the stake and um, get around them and Oh, I must have been a couple of hours along and I was just about off of the off of uh, bush bashing onto where I found a track that was going to take me where I wanted to go and um, and I picked up this fella so this is going on the back before I leave but you see what's happened there I mean there's the plug and this this tire is, is held well but you see what's happened here I mean you see here that the stakes come up and it's it's done its best to um, to plunge through that sidewall but these have got Kevlar, Kevlar sidewalls. And um, when I had a look at it, when it was flat and I had a look at it, you can actually see where it's come off of the, you know, it's tried to puncture through and it's actually come off the Kevlar. And um, obviously there was another bit of stake that I hadn't seen. And she punched through there, which is borderline tread, I suppose. So this will go on the back. And once I get back to Perth, I'm gonna um, get two new tires. And um, one can go spare and, and this one can, can be put away. But, um, I try to hang on to them as best I can because these are quite expensive. Probably $100 more than what I paid for the Toyos last time. I really rate these Toyos. You know, Goodyear Wranglers, you know, and most of my driving these days now in full time is, is probably 90% of my driving is off-road and in this, in this rough country. And 
you know roads I go where there is no roads so um, on these 265 75s uh, 16s Kevlar sidewalls mud trains MTRs you know Goodyear Wranglers but and I generally run in this sort of country um, I'm generally running tire pressures about 30 on the front and 35 on the back um, I don't get much slower in this country it, you don't want to run too low in this sort of country because you don't want to expose that sidewall and you really don't need to you know to widen the um, the tread on your the track on the tire so I, I stand to I let them down I soften down a bit most corrugations but I'll keep them probably the point just before they start to belly out a bit and um, that's my personal opinion and my personal experience but you won't get any rougher country than you know out in the gold fields and heading, for, heading, heading further north with um, you know shale and and these dead timbers sticking out of the ground for the love of me I've forgotten what the name of this I mean you get sandalwood out here but most of this timber is I was going to say Gigi but I don't think it's Gigi it's um Oh, for the love of me, I can't remember, you know. One day, <laughs> a week over 66 and I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I rate those tyres, guys, so I'll keep. So I rate these tyres, so if you're, you know, if you're in the markets and tyres are going to do it well and you're not quite sure um, what to go, and I've got to tell you there, now, I'm not saying these are the only tyre, um, but anyway, Mini review on my tyres, honest opinion on how they've gone, and I mean I pay for these tyres, you know, I've been, no one supplied them to me. Um, I was just advised that they were a tyre I was looking forward and couldn't get the tyres at the service, uh, tyre service centre at the time. And they were a good price, and they fitted the uh, fit the bill. I wasn't 100% sold being mud tyres, but um, I am now, and um, I think I'll keep running with them, and just try and get them, you know, as cheap as I can. So there you go, the old fella's choice in tyres, nothing wrong with the toyos but in this country I think yeah, the Kev Kevlar sidewalls and the mud train tyres are probably what you need. That's just my personal opinion, um, everyone will have their own opinion, they have their own experience with tyres. You know lighter vehicles, I'd, if I was driving Hilux or something I'd definitely be running the toyos. Um, geez, the flies bad. I'm definitely running the uh, the Toyos, you know, M55F because they are a good tyre and they, they drive nice. Until we meet again. <laughs> See you, team.